Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us again today for another um, another Condo Insider this week. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, COVID vaccines and with condos and their employees, even their visitors, like their contractors that are coming onto site. So I have with me our um, our guest, John Kenork, with um, Turquoiseon, Heatherting, Katz, and Harris and Kenork. I don't, <laughs> did I get it right? Good enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, he is a labor law attorney and he's very familiar with Hawaii's condo law. So some of the topics we're going to talk about is, um, so, so now that um, the state of Hawaii and the city and county have mandated their employees to also be um, vaccinated. So can condo association employees, can, can the boards also mandate that their employees be um, vaccinated? And so how would they implement that policy and the procedures to get that done? Yes. Um, condo associations, like any employer in Hawaii, have the right to have their employees vaccinated as a condition of continued employment. Um, both the EEOC and the United States Justice Department have said employers can terminate employees who refuse to be vaccinated. Uh, an, em an employee who would refuse to be vaccinated for a non-religious or non-medical reason would probably be, de be denied unemployment benefits as well. The two exceptions that you have have to do with uh, our discrimination laws. Uh, employers have an obligation to reasonably accommodate limitations imposed by a disability and to accommodate religious practices. So if somebody has a, a, an impaired immune system that their doctor tells them would not predispose them to taking the vaccine and they shouldn't do it, then you would have to make accommodations for that individual to reduce the risk of threat to other people sufficient that they could continue working. If there wasn't a way of accommodating that person in their job duties to reduce that threat of harm to others sufficient to avoid the threat of, uh, of spreading the germs, then uh, you could put them on a leave of absence or they may be terminated if there's no other position they could perform that job in. With religion, with religion, it's a different standard. Um, disability law requires employers to uh, make an accommodation unless it creates a substantial burden in terms of operations or expense. For religion, the accommodation obligation is only minimal any any kind of a, 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 a burden or expense that's more than de minimis is, is an undue burden and would not have to be accommodated. One of the one of the issues a lot of employers are facing now is what do we do if we don't want if the people don't want to be tested? Can we, I don't want to be vaccinated? Can we test them? Can we just have them tested every week? And yeah, you can do that, but the but the uh, science shows that testing is nowhere near as effective as a vaccine. Weekly testing only catches you on the day you're tested. The next day you could acquire the virus and pass it on to coworkers. So it's really not as effective uh, as a means. And, there, and in addition to that, unlike the city and county in the state of Hawaii, Hawaii employers are subject to a law called the Payment of Wages Statute. The Payment of Wages Statute prohibits employers from charging employees any part of a test that's requested or required by the employer. So while the city and county and the state can make employees pay for their weekly testing, private businesses cannot. So a condo association that might opt for testing, weekly testing in lieu of vaccination is going to incur the cost of paying for that test, including the time it takes the employee to go and get tested, which is required under pay, uh, our wage and hour laws. So testing's not necessarily a good accommodation because it's not as effective and it could get fairly expensive. Um, and that might be an undue burden. So I, I think businesses, including condominium associations, have a reason not to use testing as an option, at least not in the long term. So, I, and I also, um, if I remember right, Hawaii is an at-will state, right? So, you, I mean, how does that come into play when it comes to this situation? It, it, it's important to understand that at-will is only a contractual concept. It, all at-will means is that the employee has no contractual right to their job, and they can quit at any time, and you can fire them at any time, 
as long as it doesn't violate another law. And one of the other laws that we have to apply, even if you're at will, are the discrimination laws. And that's what we're talking about here. The disability religious. and religion discrimination. And both of those categories require reasonable accommodation, but the burden that the employer has to carry is much less for accommodating religion than it would be for disability. Okay, so how would um, an association start the ball rolling to implement their, uh, or even to start a policy um, and then implement that um, procedurally? Well, there's, there, there, are, there are plenty of ways to do it. I, we, we have a model policy we can provide you and you can share with the condominium associations. It's, it basically gives the board of directors some options. And, and the idea is that you, first of all, want all new hires to be vaccinated or agree to get vaccinated within the first week of work. So that, that's part one. You can start with anybody that comes on board from the day you adopt the policy on that they have to be vaccinated. Then to deal with employees that are currently working, um, you have to figure out, well, who's vaccinated and who isn't? So one, you might have to poll everybody and ask them. If, the information as to whether somebody is vaccinated or not is confidential medical information. An employer has to treat it as such and can't say, well, these guys are vaccinated, these guys are not. It's private, employers have to keep it confidential. But once the employer knows who's, who's vaccinated and not, then you can approach the people that are not vaccinated and say, we've adopted a policy. So the board would have to adopt a policy that, that describes when do we expect people to get vaccinated? We know that you can get free vaccinations anytime now. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll, for both the Moderna and the uh, Pfizer vaccine, you're gonna have to wait 28 days to get the second shot. So policies generally say, we expect you to be fully vaccinated within 40 days, or you could stretch it out even longer, 60 days. Right. Um, and so that's the first thing. Do you adopt a policy that says, all employees must be fully vaccinated within the next 60 days. That's part one. Step two is uh, if you have a medical or a religious uh, reason not to be tested, you need to fill out this form. And there's a sample form that says, I have a sincerely held religious belief that prevents me from putting any foreign subject in my body. And you test whether that person is being sincere or not. And there are people that have that belief system. And then you try to accommodate it and you say, well, look, you know, you're working in a condominium, you're coming across owners and other co-workers all day long. Um, I can't imagine any way of accommodating you not being vaccinated and preventing the potential spread of a deadly virus. So I'll either put you on a leave of absence or you maybe you can work the midnight shift alone or something like that. So uh, but but generally, you, you look at whether you can accommodate somebody. Uh, and if you can't, you need to put them on a leave of absence or say you're fired. Uh, with disability, you might have to make some greater accommodations. Maybe think about a um, different way of structuring the job, double masking, who knows what it might be. Uh, but it really kind of depends. It would be pretty hard for most of the positions in a condominium association um, to accommodate somebody who refuses to get vaccinated. And again, as I said, I don't think weekly testing does the trick. Would weekly testing combined with daily temperature checks and other kind of steps do the job? It's gonna be a case by case analysis and you'd have to work with your employment council to decide what do you do with somebody who has a disability that prevents them from being vaccinated. But other, okay, so getting started, you adopt a policy that says everybody has to be vaccinated unless you have a religious or medical reason not to be. Okay, so once they get vaccinated, um, would they report back with their, and, and would the employer yep. require a copy of their vaccination card? You can, you can, and there's two thoughts on this. One, if you require a copy of the card or, or to look at the card, some businesses just check off, okay, I looked at the card, you have a card, you, you, it's a valid card, and leave it at that. Um, some businesses like to get a photocopy of the card. If you copy the card, you also have to keep that confidential. Right. It has to be kept right. in a separate file apart from their regular personnel file. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so um, you set up your policy, you implement your procedures, you set your time limit so it would be out like at least 60 days from the dot mm -hmm. from the start. Mm -hmm. um, what about 
um, your vendors and contractors that say you have a repair job that's um, that's ongoing. Can you mandate that they be vaccinated as well? Absolutely. You have the right to contract with whoever you want to. You could just simply say, send only workmen that are fully vaccinated. Okay. Um, so the suggestion is to contact their labor, hopefully, and I'm sure it's most likely you, to um, start implementing, get the ball rolling yep. to implement this policy. Yeah. And it's just it's, really a board approval type of type Yeah, of I think, I, think it's a, it, I mean, depending upon the board's uh, giving authority to the, the, prop, the resident manager or the site manager, most of the time, an issue like this probably should be addressed by the board so there's consensus on what you expect. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you know, a resident manager could, could propose to the board that we adopt a policy that requires everybody to be vaccinated, get that approved, and then implement it. Um, th there are, you know, s some incentives too you can offer. Um, some businesses will say, "Look, if you get vaccinated in the next thirty days, we'll give you a hundred dollar bonus," <laughs> and that, sometimes that does it. <laughs> you know, but the people that are or, or say if you get vaccinated before the FDA uh, approves uh, of the vaccines. Mm -hmm. okay. So we know that the FDA is going to approve these vaccines sometime in the cu next couple of weeks. Right. Right. And so if you want to expedite things, offer employees a little incentive. OK, so your vendor contractors, you treat them as if just the same way as any employee, because yeah. they're doing work on the property. You're the customer. So you're, yeah. you're the customer. I, 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 Mr. Uh, Spalling Company, mm -hmm. I only want you to send in, uh, workers out here that have been fully vaccinated. Well, I don't know if they've been vaccinated. We'll find out. And can we require proof of vaccination? Um, I don't think you want to ask to know which employees have been vaccinated. You want the contracting company to verify whether they're vaccinated. So that would be on them, sort of. I speak. would say it would be on them. And okay. if they lie to you, then you can sue them. <laughs> okay. Um, so how can this mandate be enforced with like condos? I mean, how can the condos, you know, kind of like enforce it? Well, for employees, it's simple. You ask the evidence of, of the vaccination if they don't have it or don't want to get it just because they're fearful or have some idea about, you know, there's little transistors in there that are going to track them for the rest of their life. Then you say, well, I'm sorry, we don't want to employ people who have crazy notions. And so we're, you're, you're going to be let go. So you let people go that don't get vaccinated unless okay. they have a deeply held religious view about it and a disability and you can't accommodate them. So uh, your um, with, so the enforcement would be similar as your employment law. Absolutely. Okay. It, they're acting in a way that's not in the best interest of the employer, and they're being insubordinate by not getting vaccinated. Okay. And, and, sure and with contractors, it's the same thing. You either you either meet our standards, or we'll hire somebody else that will. Right. Okay. Um, here's a question that came in: Was how do you coordinate and compare the vaccine mandate with the mask mandate? Okay, so the vaccine is the most effective way of preventing transmission. That's what we know. Right. Um, and, and so we know masks work, but not as well as the vaccine. Right. So if you compare the two, you say, well, do I want to take the most effective steps to reduce the risk of transmission and, and getting the disease, getting the virus in my workplace? My obligation under OSHA law is to provide a safe workplace and, and eliminate any known hazards. Well, we know unvaccinated people are a known hazard. Do we keep them in the workplace knowing that they're potentially spreading and allowing the virus to mutate among the population of the unvaccinated? Nobody's sued yet, but I don't want to have to defend that lawsuit if you don't take the steps that. Uh, CDC and, and, the, and every federal agency and state agency and official has advocated that we, we take. Right, um, right. So, it, it, okay. I mean, there, there, may, there may be exceptions due to religion and disability. There may be way of, ways of working around not being vaccinated given a particular job. 
I mean, if, if I'm a bookkeeper and I don't have to interact with people, I might be able to work from home. I don't have to come to the workplace. And that's another point, just to make it clear, you can only require the vaccine or you can only require daily, weekly testing of people if they come to the workplace. People that are not working in the workplace, you have no legitimate reason to require that they be tested or vaccinated. So you're really talking about if they come onto your property or your place of business? On site, right. Right. So one other question was, how long would the policy have to stay in effect? So so you wouldn't necessarily put a um, like a ending date, so to speak. It's just really going to be an existing policy that can just go from year to year, right? Yeah. The, the reason employers can require employees to disclose whether they've been vaccinated and to disclose whether they've been in contact with someone with COVID and all the other things that we're doing to try to control this is because the EEOC has advised that under discrimination laws, a, during a pandemic, it is reasonable for employers to take these steps. When the pandemic ends, whenever it ends, <laughs> then these policies are not permitted you would not be able to ask these questions or enforce a vaccine order. So, so it, verbiage, is o- it is only to re- it is only because employees present a direct threat to the health and safety of other employees during a pandemic. When that direct threat defense is eliminated because there's no longer a pandemic, we won't be able to do what we're what what we're talking about today. Okay. So the verbiage was will will be um describing that during this time period and when that time period is ended, then that policy procedure will be shelved, so to speak. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that Um, would be the way it would work. How would it work in a condo when there's a unit owner that has um, their own contractors doing work within inside their own unit? Same rules? uh, Associations. And and this is, I I think you'd have to talk to your uh, you know, your condo law attorney to verify your particular rules and bylaws of your association. But I believe most associations have the right to limit contractors who they approve to be, have work in the building, even within your own unit. So we could say these are, you can only use approved contractors and unless the contractor verifies that they, all of their employees are sending to us are, are, are vaccinated, they're not approved. Um, I had some people in my house, and I mean, they were all wearing masks. And this is this was even before the the uh, vaccines came out. But they were they were really good. They were all prepared with masks. Mm-hmm. They left them on. They're talking to me with masks. I mean, I didn't even have mine on because I was in my own house, you know. But they were they were straight on, just keeping those masks on. No, I think know? I think and and, and again. Um, it's really a question of how safe you want to be. Each association has to make a decision. Um, There's a broader interest here um, that I think boards should take into consideration. I mean, while we have an obligation first to our employees to provide a safe workplace, second to provide to all the owners a safe place to live, um, the broader community safety is is an issue. Um, We the the governments of the state, county, United States have not had the political will to pass any laws that mandate every citizen get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. If we are going to reach herd immunity, the business community, and that I think includes condo boards, has to step up and say, okay, we're gonna require our employees to get vaccinated. Um, Once you inquire your employees to be vaccinated, they have to choose between holding a job or getting vaccinated. That's gonna force a lot of people to make a Pretty, pretty tough decision. Um, and hopefully that will push the vaccination numbers above the threshold of herd immunity that is necessary for the community's health and safety. And just to recap, so if an employee refuses to be vaccinated and he has no exemptions and so he's terminated, so, uh, so he really will not be able to qualify for unemployment, right? We don't think so. We've not had that case yet, but if the employer has a policy and explains to the employee that this is, the, the, this is what you have to do, and they don't have a health or religious objection, 
if you're terminated because we can't reasonably accommodate you and because you have a immune disorder or a deeply held religious view about vaccinations, then you probably would get unemployment benefits. Mm, okay. Okay. Because you'd be terminated not because of misconduct. Okay. Uh, whereas if you just have some n- notion that it's not, I'm not ready to get vaccinated yet, then you're disobeying your employer's instructions, uh, acting in it not in the interest of the employer and being insubordinate about this this matter. So the Department of Health um, is really trying to reach out to try to get more vaccinations done. So last weekend when I was at the Wanai Bold Harbor, I had I had helped to arrange that getting that site done. That was Queens' 103rd on-site vaccination clinic. It was amazing. I mean, they're so organized. It was totally amazing. So they really want to expand it onto condos. So we have one that's going to happen later on this month. But is there any, any? Um, I know there's one person that's kind of doing a pushback on it, um, but is it within the rights of the condo association to do an on-site clinic? And it's not like they're forcing it. It's, it's, it's going to be available to whoever wants to get done. So they're not mandating the residents to get vaccinated. They're just saying, hey, we're bringing them here to accommodate people that may not be able to drive or, um, you know, the, it's going to be on site rather than having to go to Long's or go to the doctor or whatever. Is there anything that um, that is illegal or you know out of? No, I don't. I don't think there's anything that prohibits it. It, it. The only thing is, it comes with all the normal risks of somebody slipping and falling or getting hurt. Um, with regard to employees, any injury is going to be work work compensable. I mean, there's always the potential that there's some. Um, <clears throat> Uh, reaction to to a vaccine and that employee won't be able to work for a few days. Uh, But employer right now, employers have the advantage. Any employer of under 500 employees can take advantage of a uh, reimbursable tax credit for any paid time off due to a reaction to the vaccine or the time that an employee takes to go get a vaccine. Um, so if you pay an employee to go for the time they go get a vaccine, you get a reimbursable tax credit for that right now. Well, it kind of serves a purpose if you have a bunch of employees that are not vaccinated and you bring it on site, accommodates both the employees and your residents. Yeah. You know, because you have some that are have a lot of seniors, you know, and you really don't want some elderly seniors to be on the road driving. Some and of them might get scared when I see them driving. <laughs> sure. And, and I believe employers and, and probably condominium associations have been having flu shots uh, on site for years. Yeah, right. So it's, uh, it, this is, to me, it's no different than a flu shot. Every, remember that the, the vaccinations are not the coronavirus. The, this, you're not being injected with coronavirus. You're, you're being injected with this RNA kind of thing that, that generates the antibodies that will attack the virus. So... So let's pull up one of the um, the PowerPoint slides that I have the pictures of sure. that um, of the Queens. Um, it was at the Wainai Boat Harbor, and uh, it was awesome. Organized. I mean, they have their own little. That's a big, huge pop up tent, um, and it, they brought their sandbags for the to keep it from blowing down. You know, um, it was really amazing. Um, they had um, tables and chairs. They had their their sanitizing wipes. Um, all the forms are available for everybody to fill out. So they're on their laptops. Um, and then I even saw the little cooler that they use for the vaccines. That was even there. Mm-hmm. That was kind of cool. I was looking at it. I go, what is this? And they go, that's the cooler for the vaccines. And I'm like, oh. But um, they had all the um, everything. And then, you know, the little tent stand up sign thing that they use. They had those and even all the signage. So they come to, if they come on site to a property, they have everything that they need except for like electricity. So they might, for the laptops, so I'm sure they have yeah. power banks, but we were at the ball harbor. So I'm sure they had alternative um, type of things. So um, Queens is willing to come on site. They're very well organized. They like to do a pre-site visit. Um, just to make sure that they have everything that they need and the space is going to be um, 
be reasonable to make sure that everybody is socially distanced. Um, they were out there last weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and they did a handful of vaccinations um, because Waianae is one of the highest areas of um, infections, you know, so we had to attack that part. But um, I really encourage condos to really take advantage of the Queens. And if we could pull up that one PowerPoint slide that has um, the Queens contact information, um, Joel Pak, P-A-K. Um, he's awesome. He is really awesome. Um, he really gets the ball rolling. I mean, he's like that. I mean, he, I was amazed. Um, but he is the contact person for the Department of Health. Um, and he can get the condo in, um, connected with either Queens or with Kaiser or Hawaii Pacific Health. Because all three of them are doing, um, well, Hawaii Pacific Health and Queens are doing on-site. I'm not really sure about Kaiser because on their website, it says you have to walk into their clinics. So I'm not sure if they're willing to do on-site visits, but he will get everybody connected up. Um, certificates on liabilities are available. I know Queens has been doing it. They've been turning it around in a matter of like three days, you know, getting certificates of liabilities. Um, so it, it can be easily done. Um, there's people out there. And I think when I was talking with Queens, when I was out there, um, so we're talking about why people are resistant and um, people goes, well, they can just go to Long's. And I, I, I had mentioned that to somebody else. He goes, I would never go to Long's to get a shot, you know? So I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know? So, you know, well, I got my second shot at Long's <laughs> and I'm still here. So you're, they're, they're, you're they were pretty good. it's still okay. <laughs> it's still okay. <laughs> um, but you know, if you're not willing to go to Long's, Go, go to these sites. I mean, I went to the one that was at the pier way back when, you know, um, and it was very well organized then too. I was more concerned about how long I'm going to have to walk, you know, just <laughs> to get there because I have an issue with my, with my ankle. I'm like, oh, that's going to be painful walking that distance. But um, I was able to get in close, closer to a parking stall. So it is so organized, you know, they have people directing traffic. Um, because they weren't, they weren't really aware of how much traffic was going to be at Y night, but they had already pre-planned to have police there to route traffic if it was necessary, you know? Um, so, you know, I think every condo community needs to try to do, make best efforts to do an on-site, um, COVID, um, vaccine clinic. It doesn't take that much effort at all because Queens brings everything, tables, chairs, um, you know, they have their van, van, big van out there, so it kind of helps to advertise. The, um, they don't like necessarily the require, yeah, I mean, they bring everything. Um, so um, any last words that you want to offer to, uh, to everybody? Yeah, one more, one, two other categories, pregnancy and unions. It, uh, uh, pregnant females, sometimes I have a hesitancy to do so, and if their doctor tells them not to get vaccinated, even though CDC is recommending, pregnant females get vaccinated, I would make accommodations for pregnant females as well. And uh, the other thing is unions. Uh, in order to implement this policy in a union workforce, you'd have to negotiate with the union. So if you have a unionized operation, you're gonna have to negotiate with the union over uh, vaccinating current employees. On the other hand, you can still require new hires to be fully vaccinated without bargaining with the union. Okay. Do you have any thoughts about, because um, there was a question that came in about, people are, are being very resistant because the government is kind of like requiring this, strongly urging it to be done, and to the point where the state and city in, in Hawaii has mandated the employees. Do you have any words about that? Well, I, ju just that all the science is behind vaccinations as the most effective way of stopping this virus and getting back to normal. Uh, the fact that the government is supporting it is really great because the vaccines are free. Imagine if we had to pay for them, uh, you know, one by one or separately company. So we've, we've got it made right now because the science and the government are working as one finally to, you know, provide the vaccine and um, the world needs it. Um, yeah. in until the world gets vaccinated, there's going to be the chance that variants will develop and in infect us. So we have to lead the world by getting fully vaccinated and going outside. Um, I, 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 I don't see 
any reasonable end to this. The Spanish flu lasted five years. Um, and, you know, that, that was influenza. This is a virus that mutates. Um, the expectation is it could be three to five years too. So if we don't get, did get to herd immunity quickly with vaccinations, we're gonna be facing this. And the other thing people are talking about now is, oh, now they're saying you need a booster shot. Yeah. Well, all, we, we get a flu shot every year. <laughs> yeah, these don't last forever, right? right? right. And, right. and one of the things that was originally designed was they said, you get your second shot in 28 days. Well, that was to get everybody highly immunized. Uh, it's it's kind of like if you get a, um, a shingle shot, you get the shingle shot, and then like six months later, you get the second one. That's kind of what they probably should have done with this vaccine, yeah. but yeah. everybody was so anxious to roll it out quickly, they did the second shot pretty quickly, and yeah. that jacked up everybody's immunity really quick. Um, so I think we can expect to get a booster shot every year because there's going That's to be true. variants of this, this virus going around for the next several years, if not longer. So um, this is just part of what you're gonna be needing to do in this fast paced world where people travel and viruses spread like wildfire. Right. Okay, so we're at the end of our show. I really wanna thank you, John. And I really want to encourage everybody out there in the condo community to arrange for an on-site um, con uh, vaccine clinic. It's going to be a lot more convenient to your residents um, and to your employees also, so you don't have to have them travel somewhere to get the, get their vaccine done. So thank you again, John. And um, I hope you have a really nice time on your vacation. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>